So with there being quite a few chatbots out there now, it's time to talk a little bit about them. First, let's talk about where these have stemmed from, what they are, how are they being used, who makes them, which are the more popular ones, and is it something I can use for my event? Then after that, let's focus on event bots. Now, because I know a lot of you value your time and because I wanted to be thorough and wanted to give you as much interesting information about this topic as possible, this video might be a bit long for some of you. So if you already know some of this stuff and want to get into the section that interests you the most, I have included chapter links in the description so you can go ahead and jump ahead. For the rest of us, let's just get into it. As our team here at ASC grows, we are finding and implementing tools that are helping us communicate better and help not only be more productive, but save time. One of the tools we recently implemented is Slack. This is not a paid promotion. Actually get everything you need for small teams with the free version of Slack for like ever. And that's awesome and they're awesome. So let's move on. One of the main services on Slack that has become very useful to us has been the use of bots. And this was the very first time I became fully aware of their existence. I wanna get into the event bot for us in the events world, but let's understand these little guys a little bit more first. So where did it all really stem from? While most of us are spending more and more time on our smartphones, we are in general downloading fewer apps. And that makes sense. I mean, there's only so much memory on these devices and only so many hours in a day that we can allocate to our favorite and most used apps. And really, many apps offer just too little value, especially for those of us who don't work off our mobile devices. I can see how apps can have a bit too much friction with little to no value in the long run. For those that do in part or in large part work off our mobile devices these days, the story is a little bit different and you'll want to keep listening as well since if you're not already using bots, you very well soon will be. In the last two years, companies have continued to focus on establishing a presence on social networks like Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, you already know these, but messaging apps like WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, WeChat, and Keek have far surpassed those social networks in terms of number of active users per month. Also, artificial intelligence has officially entered the private sector. According to CB Insights, investments in AI have tripled in the last three years, and we are starting to see AI-based products and services like Amazon Echo, Google Home, and Apple Siri becoming really mainstream. And finally, we are in the age of the consumer, and rightly so. 71% of customers now prefer to self-serve to solve customer issues. I know I do. And even when we do contact a business, we want it to be text-based communication like messaging, live chat, and even on social accounts like using Twitter to send in questions. Not so much on voice if it can be avoided. Okay, so what are they? Chatbots are software programs powered by rules and sometimes artificial intelligence that you interact with via a chat interface or messaging apps. The service could be any number of things, ranging from functional to fun. And it could live in any major chat products like Facebook Messenger, Slack, Telegram, and even the text messaging app that come on your devices. Early uses have been for practical purposes like customer service or information acquisition. Examples of this would be how Nordstrom's use it back during Black Friday or during the holiday season. Makes a lot of sense. As you can imagine, businesses are now beginning to see that there are tremendous opportunities to use chatbots to personalize content delivery and have meaningful conversations with their customers. The great thing about chatbots is they are easy to interact with on mobile. They don't require us to download any new apps. They simply live on existing messaging apps that already have millions, if not billions of users like SMS, Facebook Messenger, Telegram, Keek, WeChat, Viber, and Slack and they have the ability to personalize conversations and are text-based. That makes it easy. The first one that I ever interacted with is called GrowthBot. It shows us info about our competitors and lets us see what keywords they're using for their marketing campaigns. We can find out how much a company is spending on PPC campaigns to get a better idea on what keywords we should be using and focusing on on our marketing budget. We can ask GrowthBot to give us information on how much organic traffic they are getting and where their social traffic is mainly coming from to help us understand which social accounts do better when it comes to event industry related topics and even give us domain authority to find out how influential a competitor site is and how well it's ranking in search engines. 
I'm sure you can see how this is very useful. But I don't want to get caught up on that because today we're talking about an event bot and ideas on how we can use it for our events. Peter Roja, entrepreneur in residence at Betaworks says, people are now spending more time in messaging apps than in social media. And that's a huge turning point. Messaging apps are the platforms of the future and the bots will be how their users access all sorts of services. Okay, so who's making them? If you're thinking you might want to have a bot build for your company, a few of the services that you can build your own bot on would be Octane AI, Width.ai, Howdy's BotKit, API.ai, Motion.ai, ChatFuel, and IBM's Watson. And you're gonna be able to use them mainly with platforms like Facebook Messenger, Slack, Discord, Telegram, and Keek. I'll include the links to these places in the description below. It makes sense that companies want to focus their business where the people already are and where data shows they are continuing to spend most of the time. People are already using their messenger apps. We all know how to use them well. And most of us don't go a day without checking for updates or messages whether we want to or not. So Google, Facebook, and Apple are all in a race to make the all-in-one messaging app. And bots have already started to make their way in. With all the info they give and with the ability to understand conversational language, and when I say understand, I mean kind of. It can be a little annoying to not exactly know what words to use to have the conversation. But having these really just changed the game. I mean, nothing to download, nothing to update, no extra memory taken up on storage space, and no consistent updating. Will it be the death of apps and sites? My guess is probably not anytime soon. At least not for websites. I mean, that is after all your home base in the online world where everything ultimately gets connected to, hopefully. So now you might be like, okay, so who are the more popular ones? Let me give you six that you most likely have at least heard of. Ever since Facebook announced their chatbot platform at the developers conference earlier last year, the number of chatbots in the world has increased dramatically. And a few that I found to be innovative and interesting are, so maybe you never played it, but you definitely heard of it, Pokemon Go. The bot for Pokemon Go created by Patrick Jean, I hope I pronounced that right, is an unofficial bot that acts as an assistant for the millions of Pokemon Go players that wandered in the great outdoors. It was only a matter of time before this bot came into existence. BuzzFeed created a Facebook Messenger bot, BuzzBot, that acts as a reporter. And instead of just sending out notifications about stories, like just about all other news bots, <laughs> this BuzzBot allows people to submit tips and opinions to it that will then be turned into stories and redistributed through both BuzzFeed and the BuzzBot. Instead of collecting information on their website or in a standalone app, BuzzFeed is using the chatbot in an innovative way to act as a lightweight information gatherer. Then there's Bearhug, which was created by Audrey Lin. And this bot is a chatbot targeted specifically at females as a way to not only easily track their periods, but to also make recommendations on when she is most fertile. The great thing about this bot is that it's super simple and appears to be incredibly helpful. Then there's one I started using that I really enjoy called Joy, created by Danny Freed. And it's a chatbot whose entire purpose is to help track and improve your mental health. He came up with the idea for the bot when he realized that there are a lot of existing applications that help us track our steps, spending, and eating habits, but nothing to help us manage and check up on our mental health. Joy sends you messages every day, prompting you to let it know how you're feeling. It tracks your mood over time and gives you better idea of your overall mental health. Fitmail is another chatbot created by Georges Diverger, and it's a messenger bot that helps you track what you eat. Perfect for those of you that need to stick to a diet or just want to eat healthier in general. This bot is very simple, which is important. All you need to do is tell it what you ate and when the bot should check back with you for the next update. It then summarizes your info into a report that you can quickly access at any time. CNN has a chatbot that lives on Facebook Messenger's app, and it is set up in a way where you can just have a casual chat to get a sense of news as it unfolds. And it can send you top stories that you tell it you're interested in, or you can ask it about topics you wanna to learn more about. Okay, so that's all well and good, but what about the one I can use for my event? Okay, so now let's talk about chatbots that are specifically for events, and I want to break this down into seven simple categories. Accessibility, information and resources, community, personalized conversations, engagement, notifications, and finally, support. Okay, so once you have your attendee's permission, the chatbot can reach out to the attendee and start the conversation. The great thing here is that we already know that text messaging is familiar and easy to use for attendees, and that along with the fact that there is no app to download 
and nothing new to learn is going to mean that they will be able to respond and react right away. Chatbots are not constrained to just text. The conversation had with them includes images, emojis, links, stickers, menus, buttons, and cards so that event information and resources can be presented in engaging ways. Chatbot conversations can also include event agendas, speaker bios that include links to their social profiles, sponsors information, venue maps, and exhibit hall maps. Because the chatbot conversations are going to change over time and be a different experience for everyone over time, it will be a very powerful tool for building community and the focus of the conversations will be different during and after the event. To help further build a community, the chatbot will be able to crowdsource topics and future events and fill people in on upcoming webinars, videos, and even interviews. Because every event has different types of participants with different types of information needs, chatbots are designed to personalize their conversations by type of participant. Perhaps they only have the expo pass. Maybe they're one of the speakers or sponsors and they want more information about where they need to meet and want more information about the gala and the after parties. You can see how being able to personalize it at an individual participant level is really going to be changing the game. Chatbots will not only be providing information, they will be collecting it as well. This means that they can ask survey questions and gather insights and feedback by pulling attendees and message back the results in real time keeping attendees engaged during presentation and crowdsource questions for the panel or even the speaker. Another amazing thing is how event staff can use chatbots to deliver notifications to attendees, schedule reminders about when speakers will be starting and in which rooms, summarize reminders about what the keynote is about, if there are multiple ones going on at the same time, and the list goes on and on and on. These are of course ideas for much larger events, but think of ways you might be able to use them for smaller events. Maybe some fun and creative ways to use them at weddings, like maybe a little pop quiz about the bride and groom to the guests and pop up the answers on a screen. Finally, attendees can use a chatbot to submit requests for human assistance. Perhaps the room is too cold or it's too hot. More water is needed in the room. Maybe a speaker has been lost and now everyone needs to go out and find her. Could happen. Chatbots can alert the event staff, helping the event go that much smoother and reducing the disruption to the event. All this to just help interact and react. Enter Concierge EventBot, a chatbot specifically for events that includes all the AI to power automated conversations through SMS or Facebook Messenger. Put together by Christy Coloran, who is the co-founder of CNCO and creator of the bot, which was launched in May of 2016. She says that the bots are a good alternative to mobile apps for smaller events and also to address app fatigue. Coloran says, people don't have to download anything. They don't need to learn yet another app. And since everyone is already comfortable with texting and the information is there already in the feed. She also goes on to say that if you have the number of attendees, you can send an initial welcome message and invite them to connect. By sending messages to the bot like, what time does the keynote begin? Attendees can get a variety of information about the event instantly. The great thing here is that planners can use the bot to send notifications to an attendee that a keynote is about to begin or that the session is almost full. And like I mentioned before, you can add emojis, links, images, and menus along with them. Coloran says that the concierge event bot can also be used to gather information from the guests through pools and short surveys and to send questions to speakers. Attendees can also access a menu of all the information available through the bot, including agendas, speaker bios, and speaker links to profiles on other social accounts like LinkedIn. Accessing the concierge bot is simple. Users can go to the event's website, homepage, and click on the link to open the chat interface, but there's no Wi-Fi, no problem. Attendees can use the text messaging capabilities of their smartphones to text a greeting like, hi, to a telephone number. When Wi-Fi is available, users can use Facebook Messenger to find the bot in the search window. If the bot doesn't have the answers, planners can join in the conversation and provide one. It also tracks the I don't know responses from the bot, so organizers can add a response to the chatbot library to benefit users the next time the question is asked. The great thing about the Concierge Event Bot is that it can deliver any type of information to any user. The bot can send push notifications, pre-planned and ad hoc messages and event links to other apps like Google Maps for them to easily get directions. It can also provide images of floor plans, deliver surveys, and access meeting agenda. Coloran says the bot can even live on your website so that when attendees register, they can talk to it and ask questions, become connected with it from the very beginning. Coloran admits that its success depends on how well it can adapt to the event industry and to specific events. But that's the beauty of artificial intelligence. Adaption, it's what it does best. Personally, I agree with what Event Tech said. 
native mobile apps dominates now, but it's possible that chatbots could compete with them in other scenarios besides small or short-term events. And the fact that text messaging is the most widely used smartphone feature gives bots a leg up on event apps from an adoption perspective. Now, what hasn't received much attention are the security risks users like you and I face when engaging and interacting with chatbots. While these issues have largely been addressed for more mature platforms like websites and email, there are issues for chatbots due to the immaturity of the chatbot ecosystem. Many of you are familiar with websites, no doubt, and when you see that, you just trust that page with almost no doubt because that means that site should be authentic. When you jump on Facebook and see a little blue circle with a check mark next to the name of the page, you know it's legit because it's a verified page. Not every messaging platform has this type of process. So for now, keep your eyes open when you start using them and just get used to checking on them. If you're interested in finding out more information, I'll add a link in the description that will take you to a page that will give you some steps to make sure the chatbot is authentic. The bot can be customized so specific information is available for each type of guest, like the exhibitors, sponsors, or the speakers. As of the upload of this video, the concierge bot starts at 2,500 per event. No doubt there's a lot more to all of this, but they're relatively new, especially for the events industry. Let's see how companies start using them. What are your thoughts? Is this something you think that you would use for your events in the future? Are you thinking of maybe having one built for your business? Start a conversation below on how you might use the event bot, as I'm also interested in ideas as well. Well guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, smash that like button. For more news and event industry videos and tips, subscribe. My name is Jorge Lopez. This is ASC TV. We'll see you next week.